I know that just today I heard about a new kind of theater game called Theater Sports. And in it, they have competition between two teams. One team does a theater game, the other team does the same theater game. They have coaches on each side, and there are, there are points, and somebody wins. What, what do you think about this new development? I have to see this particular sport, to see how they can make it competitive, because one of the salient points in my work is non-competitive. That's what I was going to bring up. It's a non-competitive thing, and it's that you, the, the excitement doesn't come from competition. It comes from extending yourself. A man extends himself. He didn't go to the moon because of competition. He went because of this, uh, ex I guess you could just say extension. But we don't have to do it at the, at the, through competition. Competition, we lose a lot of, uh, it, it, it's, competition is based on the approval-disapproval syndrome, too. And it's the approval-disapproval syndrome that is killing us and prevents us from being creative, doesn't it? Well, it does worse. It, it lays in fear. And when you lay in fear, you cripple people. Uh, uh, success and failure. That's what my new book's all about. Success and failure. I don't believe in success and failure. So the only way to combat it is to keep writing more books. And now you have one coming out. I have another one coming out. And each time I write a new book, more material comes up. It's like when you teach. It's, that is the exciting thing that the games have done. And I've seen it myself and in others. The treasure house of the individual is inexhaustible. Absolutely inexhaustible. And um, the games go for the intuition. The sports things is all in the head and all in the room. They're having fun, and that's fine. But the, the uh, and they go for jokes. But the, the, the intuition is, is beyond uh, competition. It's beyond the intellect. It's beyond the, it's, it's, uh, it's an X area. It's the unknown. It's the approach to the unknown. And that's where we're going to find new things in the unknown. In the moment the unknown is touched, it becomes something known. So uh, the unknown becomes known, and it comes out of the intuition. Well, this company that we have, if you come see it night after night, it's like it's never, never the same. They play the same games, and that's when I realize the inexhaustible. I always think of it like the spiral, mm -hmm. and it's literally inexhaustible. That's why there's always a reason. <laughs> there's always a reason, and the reason we're giving is not the right reason, it's just the current one. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of the uh, 90% of this, always a reason is, uh, see, I'm a really a good guy. You have such interesting things to say about the human condition and the psychology of people, and you do it in such a way that, um, it really brings uh, out of people their best instead of their worst. Well, yeah, because this, we try to destroy the approval disapproval thing. I have this paper in the metaphoric mind. It's just to say, what does she want from us? What does she want from us? Well, she should say, is her focus complete or incomplete? Uh, uh, Nobody patted them on the head and said they were good, but they realized nobody said they were bad either. So pretty soon, they disregarded my, the need of mama to tell them they were good. So that began to develop in the player a sense of, I mean, a direct experience became possible. The other way, there's no direct experience can take place because they're busy going through the, will she like me, will they like me? You're not saying the good. right thing. Yeah. You don't have the right answer. Right. Yeah. You don't have the right answer. So they waste all that wonderful energy. In the forward of one of your books, you uh, mentioned a debt to Stanislavski, and I thought that was interesting because, in my view, uh, Stanislavski is very cerebral. Maybe it's the method. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean that I read his book, and I, uh, yeah, he's definitely, was, this has nothing to do with him. My background yeah. was not stuff. I didn't know he existed until I was well out into the world. And I was not in theater per se. I was in, I was a group worker, recreation. So I learned 
folk dancing and hundreds of games and like Freud. You have nothing to do with Freud. But if you're in psychology, you've got to say something about Freud because in a sense he was a father. Yeah. And you can't disregard Stanislavski. No, Stanislavski is in the past. And my work is on direct experience right now. That's why you have to cleanse yourself of approval, disapproval. You have to cleanse yourself of dependency on your director or teacher. You have to, uh, you're, all, uh, you're all in it together. You say that in your new book, you're talking to the single actor. And uh, I can't imagine how that can be when most of the things that you do really have a lot of interaction in them. Are you just talking to the single actor about interaction? Well, mostly, mostly what he has to do when he goes for an audition. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So also audition. what he has to do when he enters a room, and mostly what he has to do. In one sentence, I say, do you enter a room with, with your heart pounding, you're sweating, <laughs> your mouth is dry. You know, I go through every scary thing. Signs hanging out around your neck. Am I too thin? Am I too fat? Am I too tall? Am I too short? And uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> I wanted to find out when you warm actors up before they actually go out in front of an audience, what is the most important thing that you do for them to get them ready to go out in front of the audience? Put a thread through all of them to connect them. The important thing is connect. So you do everything you can that will connect. See, that's why games are so important, the base idea of games. And in games, a direct experience takes place. Nobody says, they're so excited that in the, in the circulations going physical, the physical body responds to a game. It's a question of energy. The energy has to go through you and it's got to tie in like an invisible thread. So you do things that might do it. They might not do it, but you try. That's what all the space is. Uh, um, you want people to really see. So you say, see, the tree. Now let the tree see you. Well, that's a, a, a silly, but it's not silly. You try that walking down the street, see the tree. Let the tree see you. You get a vivid experience. Or see the leaf. Let the leaf see you. Well, these are all generated by the need to connect people to each to themselves, one to each other, and to their environment. And it came out in games because that happens to be the thing that I'm interested in. If I was interested in. Uh, the kitchen or in something else that could have, the same philosophical thing would have happened. I, in, when I was in Chicago at the game, when I had this game theater, I had a bunch of um, ministers, priests, they had, what do you call that when they all came together? Ecumenical Yeah, ecumenical. <laughs> and when I got through them, what they said to me, they told me I was a theologian. I believe it too. This is 20 years ago. I said, what? I said, I don't, I'm not sure about God. And they said, oh, you don't need to worry about that. That's right, it's not necessary. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was wonderful. But I've been called a theologian. But anyway, um, I think it's the philosophy of it, like, and the physics of it. I often thought if I were to do it over again in uh, my life, I think I'd be a physicist. And one of my sons is a mathematician, so he may have picked it up for me. But the, the um, playing is a total physical act. And through the physical, hopefully, we reach the spiritual. In other words, you, you, you stir up that which you have, shake it up, explode it. It's all in here. It's all in, in, in the early pages of this theater game through this improvisation. And I was a child when the streets were quite empty of transportation, of the traffic. So it was very, we played, no TV, no radio, we just played from morning to night. I think there was a lot more creativity. Oh, in course. Yeah. Thank you very much, Viola Spolin. It was wonderful talking to you. It was a pleasure. I enjoyed my ramblings, and I hope I covered the material that would be useful to your program.